imagine you are saving up every penny of your hard earned money and then one day a person comes up to you and tells you that there is one particular scheme that needs a considerably lower investment but gives you massive returns the person sounds convincing and you start trusting them you think for a moment and then you see that with a supposed return you will be able to retire early and enjoy a dream life that you always wanted what do you do hello and welcome to the second episode of siphoned where we talk about stories of public money being used to steal and throw light upon scams in india's history that changed the game we will follow the money and unravel the politics the trade and the crime behind these scams i'm your host rijita boss and in today's episode we are delving into another notorious economic fraud in india the sarada chit fund scam but first let's back up the sarada group was a consortium of over 200 private companies in india They primarily operated in real estate, media and hospitality. It was founded by Sudeep Tosen in 2006. it promised lucrative investment opportunities to thousands of unsuspecting investors particularly from the eastern states of assam orissa and west bengal the scheme operated under the guise of a chit fund The chit fund scheme is a traditional Indian saving system where members contribute regularly to a common fund with each member taking turns to receive a lump sum payout. The scheme seemed foolproof with Sen using a network of agents to attract investors from all walks of life including low income individuals who saw this as an opportunity to secure their financial future however sarada's operations soon deviated from the legitimate chit fund model and turned into a ponzi scheme attracted by promises of high returns and misled by false assurances of financial security investors poured their hard earned money and savings into sarada's coffers the company's network of agents often operating in rural areas where financial literacy was significantly low aggressively marketed these investment schemes preying on the vulnerabilities of the financially naive and as the scheme grew so did sense greed he started a parallel and a more complex model for operations he set up a web of shell companies and forged documents to create an illusion of legitimacy all while he was siphoning off funds for his personal gain sarada was using investments of the naive and often poor and simple people to put into what can be considered a grander scheme
Instead of investing the funds in legitimate ventures as promised, Sudipto Sen and his cohorts diverted the money to fund their extravagant lifestyles and to pay off earlier investors in a classic Ponzi scheme fashion. As the scheme expanded, so did the reach of its victims. It took deposits from over 1.7 million people. When the inevitable collapse happened in 2013, millions of investors found themselves duped out of their life savings, their dreams shattered and their trust betrayed. The aftermath of the Saruda scam was catastrophic. Investors took to the streets, demanding justice and restitution. Their hard-earned and saved money had vanished overnight, and they did not know where to look and what to do. Investigations revealed widespread collusions between politicians, regulators and the perpetrators of the scam like Sudipto Sen, exposing the deep-rooted systemic failures that allowed such a scheme to flourish unchecked. Sudipto Sen and several key associates were arrested and the legal process that followed unearthed shocking revelations of bribery, extortion and political patronage. However, for many victims, the damage had been done and the road to recovery seemed insurmountable. Sudipto Sen was convicted for non-payment of PF dues in February 2014. Several other political leaders from the Congress and the now ruling Trinamool Congress were also charged of corruption. After Sudipto Sen's arrest, reports of him killing his former business partner also came into the light and stained Sarada's name forever. In 2022, the Calcutta High Court ordered that all the money of Sarada scam's victims need to be returned. The Calcutta High Court also mandated that Sarada Group's properties and assets were to be sold to return the money to its investors. The Sarada scam serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked greed and the devastating consequences of financial fraud. It underscores the importance of stringent regulatory oversight, investor education and ethical business practices in safeguarding against such nefarious schemes. As we reflect on the lessons learned from the Sarada scandal, let us not forget about the countless lives that were irreparably harmed and the urgent need for accountability and reform in the financial sector as a whole. Thank you for joining us on this journey of financial crime. Tune in next week as we uncover another episode of Siphoned. Until then, stay vigilant, stay informed and stay safe.